Aloha! This is Dr. Tiki, writing a prescription for tiki drinks, tattoos, and tech. What could be more fun? It's time for another Strange Love Live. This is Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. And as always, I am joined by Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. How you doing, Dr. Normal? Um, the bad sound you hear, the bad <laughs> audio that you've been hearing for the last three weeks or so of this show is a combination of the TriCaster and the mm-hmm. air conditioning in this room, and we're mm-hmm. not going to turn the air conditioning off on this episode, but hopefully next week we don't have to run the air conditioning and we can move the, uh, the TriCaster switcher out of the room and we'll have nice audio for everybody you know every once in a while i forget to introduce the guest yeah that's why because you talk for a while and then i'll go oh did i already introduce the guest but this this week this is my little chance we have Catherine martini kl martini on twitter hello how are you i'm good see i always knew you were kl martini before i even realized what your name was it was always kl martini and then i had to figure out what i had to like make my brain learn your name and I regret now not having my Twitter name be Catherine Martini mm-hmm. because it seems odd when people call me KL Martini. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. I'm getting over it. Because people like to call other people by their Twitter names. They do. Like people like to call me Cami Chaos, and I always go, "You can just call me Cami. It's my name, Cami." It's true. <clears throat> and for several years, I online went by Recovering Straight Girl. So mm-hmm. there are people who still call me RSG. Or recovering straight girl. Was it a big thing to start using your name? <clears throat> um, no, and actually, I was asked that question by one of my blog readers when I was at Blog Her mm-hmm. last weekend. She said, "Why now are you using your your real name?" And I sat and thought about it for a second, and was able to put it together. I changed my last name in March of 2008 mm-hmm. legally mm-hmm. when my partner Cher and I became domestically partnered in Oregon. We both had our ex-husband's last names and decided mm-hmm. that we were getting, you know, having legal recognition of our relationship <clears throat> and we wanted to leave the past behind us and so we registered and then went across the street to the family court and filled out the paperwork to change our last name to Martini, which we picked ourselves just mm-hmm. randomly because Who doesn't like a martini? Martinis are beautiful things. They are. (laughs) So when um, I went to court and the judge declared me a new name, Mm -hmm. from that moment on, I felt like I was free Mm -hmm. to be this new identity that I've created and wanted to be that instead of a pseudonym. So I began to use my real name. Because it was something you'd be proud of. Yes. It's different than the names that we're given when we're born because it's the name that you got to choose that's true that's nice and i i think that it's unfortunate that women don't do that more often Mm -hmm. we are are given our father's names and then many of us take our husband's names when we get married and um, lose some of that identity it goes back to a tradition of belonging to someone Mm -hmm. so it's it felt very empowering to me to be able to just choose my own name I really like, I, I think it's becoming a lot more common for families when they uh, when they marry or become uh, partnered, uh, whatever their genders, to choose a new name mm-hmm. that suits their family. And I think that that's actually something that's very nice. But a lot of people, uh, when I got married, I took Dr. Normal's last name. It's Cammie Cass Normal. <laughs> 
uh, but I was pregnant. I was already pregnant. We had been planning to have a child anyway, and I don't like hyphenated names. That was that was. Uh, I told you not to take. Yeah, my he name, actually tried actually. to convince me not to take his last name. I have a terrible name. But uh, I mean, come on, normal <laughs> doctor. Who wants normal? to be Mrs. Doctor Normal? Uh, yeah. Give me a break, Mrs. Mrs. But uh, Mrs. I, Hair Doctor Normal. I wanted. Uh, I wanted the child. To have the same last name as me. And so we gave her him. a bunch of other and names. And my reason was solely that I remembered, like, my friends in high school whose parents were divorced having to get notes written from their parents and their parent having a different last name and the school office woman always having to look up whether or not that person was allowed to, like, sign a note for them. You know what? I should weigh in here because, um, I, I hey, everybody. Um, I, t- I told you... Can I have my sunglasses back? No. Um, gave me... You got my name and I got your sunglasses. Yeah. Damn it. Um, th- the point is that I told you, don't take my name. It's not a stage name. Mm-hmm. It's not a stage mm-hmm. name. Mm-hmm. And, and True. we had the same problem with the kid, so we just gave her a whole bunch of... St- threw in a whole bunch of stage names in we there did. with the name. So That's true. Just in case. Hey, Dr. Normal. Hey, Do Cammy. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> I'm changing my last name. Okay, Just that's because fine. Because your last name is not a stage name. My my last name. That's right. Not a stage name. My last name. My my maiden <laughs> last name is Scott. And it's like the antithesis why of Dr. Do you, Normal. Why do you name. give... Oh, it's all over the internet. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad uses his real name on Facebook. <laughs> oh, oh, crap. I just broke my headphones. Oh, oh Dr. Geez. Normal broke his headphones. I'm the only one that doesn't have sunglasses. Now I feel like Yeah, out. I'm just... I'm mocking him. See, I, I bought these sunglasses. Can you tell? They're very, they're very feminine. Mm-hmm. And they've got the little jewels. The reason I buy such girly, girly sunglasses is so that he will not steal them from me. Um, I can't see him wearing these. Well, you never know. I'm uh, hoping. Yeah, well, let me try them. I'm afraid. No, let's, let's swap. All right. Oh, no, don't do that. Jeez, oh, man. I tried. I'm afraid okay, well, well, yeah. to <laughs> Thank you for that. Because he reprimanded me earlier for the bending over and the falling out. I love this. Oh, this man, really dude, cool. these are so Hollywood. I should turn the monitor on for you guys. Oh, if you so want to, If you want to see Dr. Is the monitor on? Sunglasses. No, no. Try it again. Yes. No. Why, do, why are there fingerprints all over your sunglasses? Uh, I don't know. I'm greasy. I like these. Yeah, these are. You can't have. These them. are hot. Yeah. Cram, cram, namlock with. Oh, jeez, you're not even in your chair. Catherine's like, what the hell's? Hey, all how right. come these are greasy? Can we have some drink music? Yeah, let's go with the drink music. Hang on, everybody. Because there's um, important things happening at the Strange of Life compound. I'm, I'm, I'm using right here, just in case you're wondering, this is the palm. No, it's not a pre. It's the pong tungsten playing our drink music tonight. Oh, there it is. And now, back to Cami Chaos. Okay, so <laughs> last week when we were out, we stopped at the grocery store and we found... And so now, we are once again able to enjoy the Tiki Bowl. This week, we are Mm. drinking a Tiki drink because it is freaking hot outside. We're having a hot Nami. It's the opposite of the snow apocalypse Bonami. Hot apocalypse. Hot apocalypse. Hot apocalypse. Oh, like hot pocket, but hot pocket. But different. I don't like hot pockets. Um, I don't like the hot pocalypse either. I don't think anyone likes the hot pocalypse. I, l- I miss the being snowed into my house. The snow nami. Sunami. I saw recently someone said, please post your pictures from the snow apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Just so that we can all. <gasps> okay. I hope that was on camera because that was impressive and sad. And a party fell. Yeah, it's on camera. I didn't know the very long straws were so dangerous. Our audio is only playing on one channel. Okay, I don't... God dang that, it. That's okay with me, because we'll just drink away our cares. All right. I'm, I'm pulling Should we introduce our off. studio audience? The audio is gone. It's only playing on one channel. Um, like the left ear. Is it because you broke one of your headphones? No. Because I'm in both ears, and... Oh, okay. I, it's because... Hey, can you say say hi to our studio audience? E- yeah. For the tech episode, our studio audience was twice hang on, as hang big. On. Hang on. Right now, we're down to 
a single solitary. We like it's too hot to have a lot of people in the room. <laughs> we would be sweating and icky and uncomfortable. And plus, people get cranky. It's uh, yeah. Cranky. We're, We're not cranky. cranky. Oh my gosh! Look how sun kissed she looks. I'm so oh, kissed have a like an orange. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm looking at her on the monitor, I didn't and she looks like she's okay, like, but I have a, I have a confession. A on a beach. Is this on? Yeah, it's totally. Thing on. Whoa. Is this thing on? Are yeah, you with yeah, me, camera yeah, guy? Come on, oh, come on. don't tap it or talk to normals. Can have words with you. I have enough problems. Okay, here. my confession. Seb Morgan is not my given name. Hmm. Are you going to tell us what you're giving? Hell is? no. If I ask hell you later, no. if I if I offer to delete certain incriminating <laughs> photos, <laughs> will you tell me later? We can talk. Okay. I think everyone should just make up their own name whenever they feel like it. I like the name that my parents gave me, though. Like, the first part of it. <laughs> the part, you know, my name. I like my... Catherine's reaction. Okay. Okay. Well, it's Canberra. It's nice. I like the name. Like, Canberra. It's, you know, I've not met other Canberras. No. I like that. I don't share very well, so I'm like, it's my name! Back What's, off! What's uh, going on in the news this week? It's Outside of uh, besides names. the fact that it's 109 degrees, I want to talk it is about 100, uh, 107 today. I think I heard 100 and something, 106. 109. I heard 107, 109, and 111. Yeah. So I'm going with 109. It, you know what? I think it was 106. It did not break the record for the hottest day in Portland ever. It was disgusting. Which 107 still, would have? And it's still hot. That's right. <clears throat> it is. It's disgusting. Is it's hot. um. It's global warming and. I think that all the conservatives who don't believe in global warming need to come to Portland this week. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. well, Portland we, is going to have to move to Alaska in order to um, enjoy yeah. our former weather glory. I don't yes. think we have any conservatives in Portland that believe that don't believe in global warming anymore. I think, I think we I think might have a few. Right. I think there's like three of them. Uh, I had a conservative uh, acquaintance of mine on her Facebook status today said, Past the Kool Aid, I might just be buying into the global warming. Wow. You have a conservative friend on Facebook? I have a conservative friend in real life, which I try wow. to look as an educational experience. I think I have some friends that are conservative ish. Yeah. I mean, we all do, right? I still love them. I don't know. I, I can I, think of one person in particular. Our country's so screwed up, I don't even and care I, I anymore. I think he's a good person. <laughs> you know that? Or, or, I don't know. I think the U.S. is so screwed up. I think there's a difference between, the, I mean, you know, here's the whole, we lump all the conservatives in together, just like they lump all the liberals in together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. different people are conservative. You know, there's like fiscal conservative and like yeah. morally conservative. Did we mention it's hot? It's really it's hot. hot. It's super So it didn't hot. break the record, but, you so, know, we're yeah, sitting down you, in an air-conditioned basement and it's still, and it's hot. still hot. That's how hot it is. It's, it's Portland, Oregon. It's the Northwest. It's not like I didn't sign on for this Phoenix. one. Phoenix. No. All right, I want to talk about the roller derby now. Please do. Is there a website? Yes, rosecityrollers.com. Uh, let me pull that up while we talk. And also, now there is a... Is it Rose City Rollers on Twitter? So I know it's that Rose City a... Roller on Twitter okay. because someone took... Someone squatted Rose City Rollers, mm. and I can't get it. Mm. And now I've already established... Rose City Roller. Now you can do something about it, though. Are they are they using it, or are they just they're not using it? it. They're squatting. You can on appeal it. to Twitter. I, I I did. Okay, good. Yeah. You know, we don't have to discuss it. You can get there eventually, and then if they do, then you can take it over. But but that's one extra character that people can tweet at you. It's true, but then do I tweet for both accounts? Then no, you can merge them. Oh, you can. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you know Betsy? Yes. Talk to Betsy. She okay. can give you the ins and outs. I will uh, try to figure that out and. Uh, I am doing their, I Twitter, I tweet for Rose City Rollers. My wife is a roller girl on Guns and Rollers, which is one of the four league teams for the Rose City Rollers. What are the other three league teams? The High Rollers. High Rollers. The Breakneck Bettys. Breakneck Bettys. And the Heartless Heathers. Heartless Heathers. Mm -hmm. And then the Guns and Rollers. rollers. Those are the four league teams. And Mm -hmm. then they have two all-star teams, the Wheels of Justice and Axles of Annihilation. So those are like the superhero league and the super villain league. They are the well. The Wheels of Justice are the is the team that is WFTDA ranked. Okay, I need you to tell me what the letters mean again. (laughs) Women's Flat Track Derby Association. Okay, so they play. 
teams from other cities and they receive a ranking. Mm -hmm. Presently, uh, Portland Wheels of Justice for the Rose City Rollers are ranked number three. Out of how many teams? Out of many. I don't know how many, but many. Go Rose City! Many, many teams. Which is um, something to be proud of. Um, The Rose City Rollers were the first team to kind of bring back roller derby Mm -hmm. when they started in 2004. And um, before my wife decided to get involved with this, I knew nothing about it and had never been to about, had never seen about. She wanted to try out. I said, you're crazy. You're almost 40 years old. Who will pay the mortgage? Mm -hmm. And we went to about, and I said, okay, you can try. And she made it on the, the fresh meat team the first time that she tried out and was drafted as soon as she was draft eligible, and she rocks it and kicks some ass. And and what's her roller girl name? Share the Pain. Share the Pain. Mm-hmm. Yes, and she's presently at Roller Con, which is a roller derby convention in Las Vegas, which is hashtag Roller Con on Twitter if you're tweeting about it. Wow. So how far back? When did the roller derby start in Portland, do you know? 2004. 2004. Yes. Do you know the song Roller Derby Queen? Yes. Do you, do you like I, that song? I, I couldn't sing it for you, though. Oh, I could, but you don't want me to. Okay. I love Jim Croce way, way more than it's actually okay for me to. Well, the roller derby from that era and the roller derby of today, the totally WFTDA, different. is very different. Correct. That I was, just love that song. <laughs> there are some teams that still do the bank track and have mm-hmm. um, a lot more physical contact mm-hmm. that aren't part of the WFTDA. They don't follow those rules. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see I think the Texas Roller Girls have a video podcast that is pretty... When I watched it, I was very surprised at the violence. Mm-hmm. Um, there isn't hitting with hands at, at for the Rose City Rollers, and you can only you know hit from your shoulder to your hips. And... Mm-hmm. Um, there's lots of rules. You can't, like, bash anybody in the face. It's not That's quite. That's good. Yes, it's much more civilized. It's an actual sport. It's mm-hmm. not for show. And uh, these are women who are, are athletes, and they work their ass off, and they have incredible self-esteem, which I think is the best thing about roller derby. There are women that are all sizes and all shapes, and they put on their fishnets and they get out there on their skates and they kick some ass and it's a great thing for a feminist movement. Roller derby is the fourth wave of feminism, I've decided. It's the fourth wave of feminism? I've decided just now. That's good. Mm -hmm. It's very empowering. decisions on the show. That's important. So when uh, when she told you she wanted to be on the roller derby team, Mm -hmm. she wanted to try out, you were like, no. I thought she was going to get hurt, and then, you know, who would pay the bills because she's my sugar mama, Mm -hmm. and I, you know, I need her to do those things for me. (laughs) She must take care of me. She cannot be mutilated in a roller derby accident. It's true. And girls do get hurt. I I nudged the straw at you, which means I think I should have a drink. Girls do get sometimes very, very hurt. Mm -hmm. Um tear their ACLs. A gal this year had her jaw fractured in oh. two places. Um, broken bones, bruises. Every time that, well not every time, but my wife went for her, her yearly girly exam and I said, oh God, please, I hope the doctor didn't see that huge bruise on you and think that I did it. <laughs> um, I'm going to point at Dr. Normal and tell him that he might need to yeah, get on something. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Normal. But overall, it's been a good experience. Okay, tell me about, so they try out, and mm-hmm. if they make the, the tryout, they get to be on a fresh meat team. Right. Is there one fresh meat team, yes. or are there? Okay. There's one fresh meat team, and that team, um, once you meet certain criteria, then you become draft eligible. Mm-hmm. Then the other teams are able to draft you onto their league teams. Mm-hmm. So then that would be the next step. There's also a recreation league for people who maybe don't want to, to have the commitment or that level of com- competition. They just want to do it for the love of the sport and exercise, and anyone can can sign up to do that. And then also there's a junior team for ages 12 to 18. So I was really amazed by something I was reading. I, I think it may have been a blog post of yours. It was something, or maybe it was an article that you wrote. It's not just a commitment to go to the practices and go to the, um, what do they call the meets? About. About. Mm-hmm. There's also a certain amount of community service required mm-hmm. of anyone um, enrolled, what's the uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for, not, not enrolled, but active on one of the mm -hmm. teams. The um, Rose City Rollers is a, um, a nonprofit 501c3 organization, and they um, give a certain amount of money and time to different charities in the Portland metro area. Mm -hmm. um, this Sunday, they're actually doing a fundraiser with um, Shock, which is for ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. S-H-O-C. S-H-O-C. Yes, and I don't know what it stands for. I don't remember. Do you know what the website is? I, it might be shock.org. Okay. But it would be, um, you could be able to, you would be able to find it on the rosedityrollers.com site. It would be a link to it for the events. In addition, each um, girl is required to volunteer six hours per month for league functions. So mm -hmm. they have to serve on a committee, or they need to set up or tear down from about, et cetera. So ever since your wife became involved with it, mm -hmm. you have kind of become a spokesperson for it uh, in the tech community and on Twitter. And I think that's really incredible because you've really just kind of taken something that's obviously very important to her mm -hmm. and thrown your all into it. And this was... Um my my wife is not as outgoing and social as I am, and this mm -hmm. was kind of her thing, and then I did kind of come and take a part of it. But as she says, as long as I don't skate, then it's okay. <laughs> and I've also become, um, her teammates re all refer to as as their, I'm their, their wife, too. Mm -hmm. so I'm the team wife, because nice. I take care of everybody mm -hmm. the best that I can. But yes, um... Uh, when I met um, Rocket Mean, who is the executive director and one of the founders of the Rose City Rollers, at a at a party, who is also on Twitter at Rocket as, Mean, yeah, mm -hmm, at Rocket Mean, we started chit chatting about different things and uh, Twitter and Facebook and other social media that that they weren't utilizing that they were using all 100% traditional uh, media. So I volunteered my services and had some um, advice from Media Chick and other people and had a meeting with her and, and started uh, just with a Twitter account, and it's working. Yeah. So it's so, good. Um, is there, like, a season for it, like football and baseball and basketball and soccer? They all have seasons. Mm -hmm. Generally, the league season it goes from January to June, and the all-star season is all year round mm -hmm. and they have different times that they're on break right now the league teams are on break for all of july which means they don't they're not required to go to endurance and to practices um most of the girls do do things on their own so that they stay in shape mm -hmm. because it's hard when you, when you stop yeah. to get to ramp back up but pretty much everyone takes July off, and with the exception of the travel team, the Wheels of Justice, they continue to practice and they continue to have bouts, and and then a lot of the girls are at RollerCon right now. Wow, that's very cool. It is very cool. That is very cool, and I hope that if you're listening and you haven't been to the website and you haven't checked out a derby bout, which I haven't, because and you I'm live late, right down the street, and I live right by the the hangar where they have. Now they don't. Do they all have their matches at the hangar? No, the um, the league this past season the league bouts were held at the hangar, mm -hmm. uh, which is at Oaks Park, mm -hmm. and that area that venue can only hold about 400 people, and so they were smaller, a little bit more intimate. Those were for the league bouts, and then the bigger bouts. So when when we were hosting another city or the season opener and the season final, mm -hmm. they're held at the Expo Center, okay. which can obviously hold quite a few more yes. than that. I know that Dr. Normal um, has has a person that he's worked with and his entire family uh, are big roller derby fans. It's very addicting and people who are into derby are way into derby. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's it's for everybody. There's there's no demographic that it can't appeal to or doesn't appeal to. So it's across all social and economic levels. Um, it's the, actually the perfect sport for an economy like this because it doesn't cost what it costs to go see a Blazer game or yeah. How old a do you have to game. be? I mean, is it is there a certain age, like, as far as, you know, can we bring the little kid? Oh, or yes. Is it like how, how long are the bouts? Um, about, there's two 30-minute periods in each oh, see, bout. This is even better than soccer, Dr. Normal. Uh, we yeah, <laughs> pretty but, much so everything I would, as far as it's. It, we, I would say it's PG to PG thirteen. Mm -hmm. um, all right, whatever. 
Yeah, she really. Watches. If if the girl can sit through a, a Timbers PG-13. match, yeah, and and listen to the Timbers chanting and watch the guy in the front flipping off the mm-hmm. other team the yeah. whole time. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> I I think that our fans are the fans are are respectful and mm-hmm. they're very passionate for their teams. But no, there's there's not that. Um, so, so there's I a certain a amount of sexuality, you know, that is a sex appeal that is that is put out by the girls. Certainly, but. that's not for me. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was uncalled. Did you for. have a question, Doctor? Yeah, Marvel? I did have a question. Did you want to get a word in edgewise? Yeah, I did. Um, Can you stop talking? Hey, um, the question is, you know, um, like Cammy, are you, could Cammy be in the roller derby, or would that would that be okay? I mean, are you? Are you asking me, or are you I, I'm asking... I'm asking her what she thinks. Are you a little too fragile? You're kind of fragile sometimes, but you're also kind of tough. And you are a talk show host, so, I mean, I, that kind of I makes am you a talk tough, show host. I guess. She did say you're not allowed to hit anyone in the face. Oh, yeah. Yes, although, you know, you could fall and hit exactly, your face. and break my there, jaw. There could be that. Um, yes, Cammy could be a roller girl. I think that Cammy would be a great roller girl. And really? You don't have to be... You can be any size and any shape, and... The, they have very small girls that are great jammers, which means they're the ones that score the points and they can get by people really fast. Mm. I would want bigger to do that girls. Just so no one touched me because I don't like the touching me. Well, thing. see, see, that's and what I hurting. imagined. I don't like the hurting. Because I, I remember roller derby back in the but 70s. See, and and those girls this is where were we pretty, get back to the Jim Croce thing. Pretty big I and and substantial. I mean, not big. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Oh, and well, Cammy, well. believe it or not, it's kind of tiny. And and so you actually have like people like like forwards on a basketball team or something that are tinier. Or? Oh yes, yeah. There are some very tiny girls who um, usually the best position for them is to be the jammer, the mm-hmm. ones that yeah. that score the points. The bigger girls are. How do you score a point by getting around? You you have um, each team has five girls See, on the track <laughs> at one time. You have four blockers, and they start up at this spot. They start up ahead of the track, and then the two jammers are behind them. They wear a star on their helmet mm-hmm. so that you know that they're the jammer. Mm-hmm. So the first oh, cool. whistle blows, and I the like blockers stars. go. And then the second whistle blows, and the jammers go. Mm-hmm. The um, the object is that. You want to be the jammer that gets, that is ahead of the other jammer and gets past everyone in the pack at least once. Mm-hmm. Once you do that, then you're considered the lead jammer and you can score points and you can also call out, call off that particular jam at any time. Mm-hmm. Each jam is two minutes long and it will run two minutes or it will end when the lead jammer calls it off. When's the next bout? Um, that I, I have the answer. Ooh, I'm, Doc, I'm so website. glad that Doctor Normal When's has the next the Guns and Rollers bout? That uh, won't Dr. be. The, that's not going to be till the, the season starts in it was January. August twenty uh, second. August twenty second is the next. Hang on, because I was showing the Portland. website here. Um, hang on. Uh, August twenty second, Wheels of Justice mm-hmm. versus uh, Duke City. And that's in Portland. Um. I'm not sure. Hang on. <laughs> I um, think he wants to be a roller derby widow. Isn't that... Uh, yes. I, yeah. Actually, I, I, here's the thing. Your knees are That's what so I worry. Bad. I worry about my knees. <laughs> knees are it's a big like, deal. Yeah, yeah there, there are many girls. I love to skate. I love to skate. And, and my biggest issue with skating is that usually when you go to the roller rink, there's people in your way and children in your way. Oh, it's at Oaks Park. It's at the hangar. Okay, we so, can go. Okay. What's the date? Uh, August 22nd. And what's the day of the week? should be a Saturday. Saturday. Uh, All I'm right. guessing it's Saturday. Give me three tickets, Dr. Normal. Or right give now. me two tickets and a babysitter. Your choice. Let me, let me just put that up on the... Um, you can get the tickets from Brown Paper Tickets. I'm we sure should there's have, a link on there. We yes, should, I think, and, and you guys all need to hear this, I think we should have a roller derby tweet up. Mm-hmm. I'll be out of town. Um, I, Except for Morgan, who's ex- excused because she's out of town. I absolutely would love to do a roller derby tweet up, and the only reason it hasn't happened to this point is just because I hadn't had the time to kind of organize it. But I think it would be a wonderful idea. Let's, let's. I'll help you. Okay. Let's organize it, and we'll have a roller derby tweet up. What's the time, Doctor Normal? Of the match, five o'clock. I, you five know o'clock? what? You're asking me a lot of questions. I'm looking at what. It should cameras, be five o'clock. Yeah, I believe her. She says, she says five o'clock. So they're five typically o'clock, at five o'clock. August twenty second. Is that the date that you yes, said? Yes, that's what I said. Okay, yeah. everybody get tickets, but not before I get tickets because <gasps> I don't want to not be able to go. 
I don't think we. And if you get tickets you. and you're coming, then tweet me. Tweet mm -hmm. at, at me at KL Martini mm -hmm. or at Rose City Roller. So are you? No, it's all general admission. Yeah. It's all general. Well, there there are VIP and Rockstar tickets also, and um, that just gives oh, you a where do we particular get session, section. Mm -hmm. And the VIP tickets, you have to um, be a sponsor or How much does be that invited. Cost? The VIP tickets, you can't buy. Those are mm -hmm. VIP you tickets. You have to be special, Dr. Martin. We can talk. Strange Love Live is a great It's show, true. It's true. You could perhaps be a sponsor. Sometimes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can put you in touch with that, the right person for that. But you can do rock star, which just gives you guaranteed seating in a certain section. Oh. But it doesn't really matter. Wherever you sit in the hangar, you can see everything, which is great because it's a very small venue. And that's the much better choice for a tweet up because then we can all guarantee that you know, you know what we, we would found find each other. Yeah. Yes, is when you sponsor something. Yes, you get the best tickets. Mm -hmm. It's true. You get it's seats. true. Um, note to people. If you want to guarantee a seat, a really good seat at Ignite Portland at Let's, the Baghdad, yeah, sponsor, sponsor Ignite. Sponsor it. So, sponsor you know, it. what? $250 to sponsor Ignite Portland. They yeah, need sponsors. Go for it. $250 to sponsor Ignite Portland, and I believe you get four seats. Yeah. So that is correct. Yeah. Four seats. And they need sponsors. They always need sponsors, right, Morgan? Always need sponsors. So if you would like guaranteed good seats to Ignite Portland, which does not have a ticketing system anymore. That's right. Hallelujah. Sponsor Ignite Portland and you can have four seats. Four seats for two hundred and fifty dollars. And it'll pay their or more. Expenses. You even could pay more and be a rock star of sponsorship. Even the speakers only get two seats. Yeah, the Ooh. speakers only get a seat for them and one That's other person. And one person. That's a good deal. Yeah. For two hundred and fifty dollars. And you get your name out there and mm -hmm. and uh, you get to do a thirty second sponsor video. Yeah. Nice. Which you should not do as a lame commercial. You should do as an awesome, awesome, fun thirty second video. <laughs> so Those are I, my st two cents. I still had another roller derby question. Okay. Um, so are Did you, you buy my doing tickets? the so you're on Twitter, so you're doing some of the social media for yes. Is it Twitter and Facebook and all this? What are so you? Far. Give us a rundown on the tech and what you're doing in social media for the Rose City Rollers. Okay, so far we are doing Twitter and Facebook. We have uh, created a we have a Rose City Rollers page on Facebook. Plus, we have a page for each of the teams, including the Rosebuds and the travel teams. What's the Rosebuds? The Rosebuds is the junior? junior roller derby team from 12 to 18, and they're actually holding a clinic this Sunday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 3.30 at the hangar for any girl between the ages of 12 and 18 who may be interested. Mm -hmm. They can come and do a free clinic and... Cool. Learn how to do everything, and they need um, the proper equipment. So, a uh, helmet. helmet, triple Pad. eight helmet, mm -hmm. pads, mouth guard, and skates. Um, safety first. Safety first. And um, not being sarcastic or ironic or snarky. Safety first. Yes, and the and they are, the equipment will be checked to make sure that the girls have well fitting equipment. So what kind of triple what was the helmet? Triple eight helmet. Triple eight helmet. Yeah, I don't really know what that means. I I, I keep picturing my little bell bicycle helmet yeah. with my pink. No, it kind of comes I think the over skateboard helmet like is your the head. one I have. Yeah, I've got the um I know that in Oregon you have to be 16 and then you don't have to ride or don't have to wear a helmet anymore, but I I firmly believe that any time that you are putting yourself uh, on a vehicle that moves faster than your feet, you should be wearing a helmet. I agree. And there are some people that should probably wear a helmet even when they're, when walking. they're walking. I might be one of those people. I but personally feel people should wear a helmet while blogging and <laughs> podcasting. Trust me. And beer and blogging, too. Well, oh, definitely while beer and blogging. Have you ever been to a beer and blog? I have. Yes. I believe that the the one that I was at, you were not at. Yeah. I don't I don't get to go all the time because Friday night right. is when beer and blog is, and Friday night is also when my show is. Right. This is a lovely Friday. It wasn't mm -hmm. really 106 today, was it? Oh, I, no. I, I really hope. No, I, I was I, talking I, about Wednesday, wasn't yeah, I? Yeah, we were talking about Wednesday. It's okay. The secret is blown. It's all good. I don't get a crap. It may be 107. In order for my mental health, occasionally we have to pre-record the show. But we would never do that. To no, say it isn't I, so. It would be better for me to be insane. <laughs> 
So um, we were discussing Derby. The, right, we were the discussing. Derby widow. Yes. <laughs> well, we were discussing um, social media for the oh, Rose City yes. Rollers. I want to talk about Derby Widows, and Mike wants to talk about social media. Okay. Well, the extent of the social media at this point is the Facebook pages, which we have created and update. And Do you have the, the name? Do you have more than 100? Nope. Oh, my goodness. I, I you know what we need to in. get? We need to get everyone who's watching the show now needs to go and be fans of Tell Us the Pages. It's Rose City Rollers. Mm-hmm. And then we have uh, Rose City Rollers All-Stars. Mm-hmm. Then each team. So the Guns and Rollers, Heartless Heathers, High Rollers, Breakneck Bettys. And the rosebuds. When I put the, the post team. up, when I put the post up for this show, I will try to link to each of the Facebook pages so that people can go to them and uh, add add themselves as fans, and that way you guys will be able to get right. the the special Facebook URL, which is right. much easier to find and link to. It is. I have that for myself. Yeah, I've not used it yet. We but. we had to appeal to the masses to get the Strange Love Live one because I think we had twenty eight fans. And they did a good Live. job. They did and, it in an evening. And they they wonderful. did it in one evening. I asked, and I think we got more than seventy five people. Um, we needed our vanity URL because I'm right. lazy and I hate figuring out things. So I agree. Thank completely. you guys so much. And if you guys could help the Rose City Rollers get their vanity, it would Facebook make me pages, happy. It would make Catherine happy. It would make me very happy. Also, at the present time, the website that is presently on there is being completely redesigned and mm-hmm. will be a content content management system rather than the um, the Flash page that it is now. Um, hopefully, everything will be reworked so that we are able to use that as a hub and have everything else go out from it and have it everything be easily accessed. What are you going to use? Is this a Drupal site? I wish that I could tell you. <laughs> um, I did get to see a preview today, but I don't know what is being being used, and I glanced at it. So I'm not, I'm not into that part of it. So is your becoming involved with the social media aspect of the roller derby your way of not being a roller derby widow? Um, I think that I'm still a widow. I would still be considered a widow, mm-hmm. but I'm also. It also seems that I'm the team wife and now, you know, viral media manager. So, so you're just kind of like, you know, a widow that's clinging to the ghosty. I guess because you're still. I mean, you're involved. You've yes. got you've got involvement, so it's not quite so painful that she's away from you being roller derby queen. Right. That's true. And to be honest with you, I'm so busy myself that the mm-hmm. fact that she's at practice three times a week, I, I it's it, it's not a big impact on my life. That so sounds terrible. Tell us what you're, because you're going to school. I am going to school full time to finish my English degree, and then I hope to continue and get a master's in fine arts in creative nonfiction. And um, everyone says, why? Do you want that? And the reason is because um, I have three children that I will need to put through college. And with an MFA, I could teach at a college. Mm -hmm. So that would be a benefit there. Mm -hmm. And also, it's a good thing to be able to fall back on um, later in life after I send my kids away and go and do wild and exciting things with my wife. We are planning on um, when the last child goes to college, my children are... 10, 12, and 14. So in eight years, we are going to sell our house in the suburbs and buy a sailboat and sail to Central America for nice. 18 months to two years. Very nice. Yeah. So when I get back from that, maybe I'll write a book or something on the sailing trip. Nice. Good plan. I kind of have these images that I'll be drinking cocktails and writing, mm-hmm. but I don't think that will probably be the case. Yeah, we'll I like to drink cocktails and write, and then I find that it's not nearly <laughs> as interesting when I'm not drinking the cocktails as it was when I was drinking the cocktails. I find that tea is the proper beverage for writing. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Really? We'll what? see how that goes. Dr. Normal, do you have input? No. Morgan? Unless you're trying to do NaNoWriMo, and then coffee is definitely the preferred. If you're doing NaNoWriMo, then anything that you can pound out is what you need. Right. And and help you to stay up all hours so that you can start at at midnight on November 1st. Oh, my goodness. Did you do NaNoWriMo? I tried, yes. I didn't do it this year. I did it the year before, and I finished. Wow. Have you done NaNoWriMo? I have not. I I can't do many more writing outside of what I do now. I... All of the writing that I do, I, I feel like I'm, I'm a multitasker writing because I write 
papers for school Mm -hmm. and then I write um, my blog Mm -hmm. and then I am free I freelance for the Oregonian and I do news and then I freelance for Just Out which is Portland's gay and lesbian news magazine as a columnist. Are you going to be at um, uh, Digital Journalism Camp tomorrow? I will not be at Digital Journalism Camp tomorrow and Saturday. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds interesting. It's free and at the Oregonian. That sounds great, but I don't think I can make it. Okay. But it sounds great. I thought I would make you aware of it tomorrow. I'm, I'm really glad that you did. <laughs> even, even though uh, registration is closed. Oh, registration oh, closed, that, uh, closed on Thursday. That's right. Yeah, that's true. I'm sorry. That's okay. You're not you're not able to attend because you didn't register on Thursday. So right. never mind. Well, it's, it's, I just have too much on my plate to be able to make that work. It's Friday. Yes. It is Friday, and it's hot. <laughs> Very it's hot. still hot, despite what you may think. I mean, you might be thinking Wednesday was way hotter, but it's still very hot. It is. It takes a long time for the atmosphere to cool down yes. when you have, if it's Wednesday and you have 109 or 111 degree weather, it's still hot by Friday. By Friday. It is. Even Saturday. Yes. I think it's hot. Actually, uh, people in the chat room were saying <laughs> that. Um, uh, <laughs> Cops, uh, people were walking up to cops and asking, asking them, them to, to shoot, uh, shoot them. Right. Very cute, sweet, sweetie. David Mamet, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, yeah. thank you very much on the literary side. I actually tweeted that. That was my yes, last tweet. I, I was going to pull that tweet out. Yes, I saw that. That was that was on. That was your last tweet. You Character of Ricky Wednesday. Roma. He says that when he walks into the office. I did see Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross in Boston. What oh, kind of movies do that you must have been awesome. Them? Hmm. I like movie that i guy. i'm very eclectic in the the things that i like mm-hmm. i like crime um mm-hmm. um uh con artist movies those are my favorite so uh, have you seen what uh, spanish, david mabbit a uh, spanish for prisoner? god's sakes i have not oh, you should see and i also person. like a assa- movies about assassins because secretly mm-hmm. i would really like to be an assassin. Yeah. House you know of that, Cards, though. House Are you going to see Ninja Assassin, assassin that's coming out soon? I might, I might have a, Is there a movie called Assassin coming out? Ninja Assassin. Oh, Ninja yeah. Assassin. Mm-hmm. I might have I want to be a sexy assassin more I like want, Angelina Jolie. I wanted to be a cat burglar. As a child, my goal in life was to be a cat burglar. With the, like, slinky little black right. outfit and the boots. That was very important to me. I did not want to have to wear a mask, though. Because no, that'll mess up your makeup. my hair and makeup, Exactly. <laughs> So that was my goal in life, and you, you know who the cool cat burglar was on TV when I was growing up. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jim Appeal. It was uh, well, no, but good point. She wasn't really no, a cat it was, burglar, uh, but what was his first name? It was, oh, it was something a Monday. It was Robert Wagner in It gonna... Takes a Thief. Oh, I remember, remember that. that one. I remember that. Remember show. It Takes a Thief. Yes, starring Robert Wagner. I believe. I Wasn't it Rob, Robert Wagner? Yeah. I don't think there were any I good so. cat burglar shows yeah. when I was growing up. And then there was a Mission Impossible. Oh, God, dun, I love that dun, show. Dun, dun, dun. So to finish my thought, Glenn oh, Gary, Glenn Ross with uh, Peter Falk. On, oh, is what I saw. on stage. Oh, is on stage. Yeah. Mm. And he played Levine, I would mm-hmm. imagine. Wow. Was he a cat burglar? Absolutely Salesman. not. <laughs> okay. David Mamet. Salesman. Too bad. All Salesmans. about scams and men. Men and scams. Hey, do you, are you a fan of Mamet? Are you familiar with Mamet? No. Yeah. Don't don't tell Doctor Normal that. That's okay. He'll try okay. to school you. House of minute. she'd love House of Cards. I I think I have a couple of movies for you to watch. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate it because yeah. this is Do my we? off time. Yeah, we so. have House of Cards, I think, and I Spanish so. Prisoner. She needs to watch Spanish Prisoner because she likes con artist movies. That was one of his last. That was the one. That's the one with movies. Steve Martin. Or Steve I don't think that wasn't a play. I think it was just a movie he wrote. Yeah. He's um, not even trying to be funny. He's just Ben Gazzara. He just is. He's just huh? good. Ben Gazzara. Well, you know that now that it's Friday, Friday, that would give me something to do tomorrow uh, because my wife is still gone. She yeah. left on Wednesday, and she. <gasps> oh, oh, there it goes again. Oops. And, now and it's there's on the dirty a nice floor, so I'm just not. That that's okay. Floor it was a has dirty been shot there since we moved in. <clears throat> so I'm not. A little move. dirt won't hurt anyone. Yeah. No, we've no roughage. Could you reach for that again? <laughs> she said a little dirt won't hurt anyone. Just. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I did. I was on the wrong camera. <laughs> Doctor Normal switched to the That's back okay. of my we, head. We already, we already. Um, yeah, no, we've already been to the boob shot. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. No, so we moved into this house, and the guy that lived here before us had huge uh, dogs you know, that it, apparently he. Uh, I 
won't get into. But David this, Mann. I won't David eat Mann. anything or have a straw off of this floor. So I'll just wait till the show is over and then I'll get into okay. it. Uh, so where, where were we? We have covered um, the social <laughs> media for social Roller Derby. And Roller and Derby widowing. Yes. Um, maybe I could mention that I, I do blog also. We could talk yeah. about your blog. Yeah. It's recoveringstraightgirl.com. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where you blog there. That is where I blog. And I started recoveringstraightgirl.com when I was first coming out as a lesbian at age 35 after being married for 10 years and having three children and living in the suburbs. Wow. Ooh, and I, did you live around here or yes, was it somewhere else? I do wow. live around here. I in still the live suburbs. in the very, very scary, scary suburbs. Ooh. Very scary. I used to live in the suburbs. Yeah. Yes. I had to run away. I would love to run away, but as we discussed off camera earlier, yeah. it's not conducive to the to the children. well-being of my children at this moment in time. Yeah. So for now, um, I'm actually not the token lesbian in the town that I live in, which mm-hmm. is Sherwood. Um, huh? uh, there well, are Sherwood's several nice. of us, believe it or not. But I am pretty close to being one of the, the... We are basically diversity, though. We are the diversity. You're the diversity mm-hmm. of Sherwood. Yeah. If you want to see diversity, then you see my family. Wow. Well, that was like the couple that lived down the street in Banks. We, we actually lived in Banks Yeah, no, the only diversity in our neighborhood in Banks was the lesbian couple that lived yeah. down the street. Yeah. That was the extent of it. Yeah. yeah. It's a... Uh, but Sherwood's nice. Sherwood's still... Oh, and there, there the was rural. me, it's and I walked the through the park with my tattoos, mm-hmm. and I tried to, like, walk through the park with my kid, and all the mommies would, like, um... Oh, you, you know... Shy their children, bring the children in towards themselves as I walked through with yeah, my but, but, stroller but, but, but and my kid. People in banks are yes. watching us now on Tualatin Valley. But they're very nice, but that was yeah. then, and this is now, and now they're there was very, a lot, There was a lot of lovely. ink there when we were moving out. There's yes. a lot of mommies with sure. ink Whatever and banks. Normal no, says. no, there is. There are a lot Oregon. of positive things about living in Sherwood. I mean, mm-hmm. absolutely. And it was just named the number one place to raise a family in it's the close United to Newburgh, States. Was right? it? In Family Circle magazine. Wow. No, Which, wait a minute. Yes. I thought that was a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I actually wrote um I wrote a column piece about it kind of kind of dissing it because I felt that the criteria that was used was a little bit ridiculous. So mm-hmm. it's a it's a great place to raise a family if you're white and you're conservative and you're religious and you're rich. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what the criteria is of a great place to raise a family, mm-hmm. and not nothing to do with you know having some diversity and having access to public transportation and. I always find any time they say it's the best place for this or it's this or there was some article written about how manly Portland men were and you know how these places are great for this and this is great for that and I always find myself no matter what the outcome is I'm always finding myself insulted by them and maybe it's just because I look for things to be pissed off about but I always yeah, like you don't <laughs> I told oh, jeez I told actually I think I wrote an RPDX piece yes you did yeah i remember you about, did jump in all over it how bullshit i thought the criteria for men were it was about hunting and oh. sports teams and things like that and i was like well was that's that how we measure ago? the worth of men in <laughs> right. our society fantastic right i always find it frustrating to measure the worth of any one city or any one person by this insane set of standards that's imposed by society. Uh, yes, society mm-hmm. and our country in general. Well, and I think that the thing, the bottom line of it <laughs> is... God bless America. Me. The, the bottom <laughs> I line love of America. I do. I love America. I'm glad you do. <laughs> but, I mean, no, seriously, we have freedoms and liberties here that you other people that. don't have. But we also have rules and regulations and, and restrictions no and judgmental bullshit and no good health care. And a homeland pro- security any, department. And a home, <laughs> anywhere you live, there are problems. But and I think the basis of the of problems informed. in the United States is based in classism. I agree. If we could eliminate classism and... Europe's worse, and eliminate Europe is worse than in classism. I, and class, I'm sure that? that that's true, but yeah. I think that the capitalism We're getting the classism, there, then that feeds the racism and the sexism. Yep. And I think other places are working on their class system and trying to break away from it to a certain extent. And we're trying to get there. And right. I think we're America is like setting that. up a class system. Yes. Right. And I think that it's You're absolutely right. And it really upsets me. 
Well, yep. part of the problem is that people who have privilege don't realize that they have privilege, and yeah. so they just expect that everyone else has the same privilege and opportunity that they have, but that isn't the way that it works in the world. And we uh, create groups of people who become invisible. Mm-hmm. I think so. The American I think we shift which groups they are. The American system worked well back when we had a lot of land, like manifest when there was room destiny. For everyone. There was room for everyone. Um, you could be rich. You could be poor. You could go make your way, and nobody. Who but cares, even then, right? it worked for people who had the means to get here and the mm-hmm. and the yeah. ability to introduce themselves. But there was to a thing where people things. worked hard. Because and how well out. did it work for the slaves when we first came here? It didn't work well for them. Right. But but here's the thing. I think I agree. <laughs> oh, I think I think Kenny's, we're trying to make a have and have not society. And you know, and granted, people need to work hard and everything. But uh, what a mess. You know what? You can work your ass off in this country. And Let's talk can, about homeland security. You can say security. that everyone can achieve whatever. If you work hard enough, anyone can have anything. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. But it's not. It's just not true. It's yeah. not true. Yeah, let's talk about have, what I read about today on Friday about how the, the, small, the small business administration is not giving out loans to small mm-hmm. businesses. So $700, $800 billion to big, giant banks and... You know, mom and pop can't get a fifty thousand dollar loan. But all those business. CEOs are getting their oh, yeah. bonuses. Oh, mm-hmm. Goldman Sachs is getting their and bonuses. And it's not like a little bonus. F- we can afford to, you know, replace our air conditioner or right. go on vacation. It's like, oh, yeah, we can buy a new shit. mansion, right? Oh, or a look, I need a nice jet or a mm-hmm. yacht yeah. or a, a third home in mm-hmm. Paris. Yeah, it's just an, another issue of of people who have not realizing what they have. Right. Yeah. And privilege. Thinking. And I'm not trying to deny those privilege their privilege. I'm just saying maybe everyone uh, I'm sorry, it. small business loan. Exactly. Small freaking mm-hmm. business loan. It's like, oh, America is all about small business and, no, you know, the big true. No, it's not. It's not true at all. It's My not, dad's been a small businessman for 30 years. Yeah. He he gets taxed up the wazoo. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, oh well. You know, I got to vote for those guys who are cutting taxes. They're cutting taxes for corporations. They're not cutting taxes exactly. for small business people. Get over it, people. You're screwed. Hey, you know? Doctor Normal. Hi. Um, I would let you go on with this rant because I'm. I actually, love it. <laughs> it's hot, and so I'm perturbed. I know. Well, you just ran about stupid stuff. <laughs> oh no. Ah! <laughs> That was dangerous. Oh, that was I'm unfortunate glad that wasn't a words. Spike skill. <laughs> yeah, he's lucky that I'm wearing wedges I, this evening, I, isn't he? I apologize. I have spikes. Oh no, I don't. I, I, I apologize. Too. I thought I had spikes. Yeah, no, they're not spiky enough. I'd I, like you I, throw I, one I apologize. Out of it, that was. I ran about stupid stuff. I was <laughs> no, going to tell no, you that we've no, been talking I'm for like sorry. an hour. And I'll edit you, that why, out. We might want to consider like happy thoughts to end the show. <laughs> no. <laughs> What are your thoughts? Let's ask Catherine what else she's ranting about. What are you ranting about? What am I ranting about? Besides classism and sexism and racism. And small and business all the administration. And don't, small don't forget businesses. That. Bailing out the big banks and bonuses. Um, <laughs> oh, and, and, never mind. I'm not even, because that's a whole new category for something I'm upset I'm, I'm about. I'm sorry I said you ran about stupid but stuff. But it's a food thing. And it's a food related item that makes oh, me very Oh, I told angry. you about that. Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't even your food related item. No, the We're Wall Street gonna, Journal. No, and all no, these guys. I would incorporate right. that, but I have issues with people and food and the food that people eat and the reasons that they eat the food that they eat, and and I just think people should. Well, you need eat to eat food. genetically modified food. But that's important. My point was is that it's been an hour. No, I know. But so, the problem with what you were saying about the food it relates back to what we were saying because the corporations exactly. are producing that food and selling that to the masses in our society. And unless and you have a certain okay. unless you have a certain amount of education mm-hmm. or privilege or the time to read these articles or the time to very carefully do your grocery shopping right. or you live in Portland where healthy food is shoved at you by multiple food areas although we still have our crap food uh you just don't have the ability or the finances to make healthy food choices when it's expensive to buy organic exactly. and it's expensive to buy you know things that are are good for you exactly it is it's much more expensive to feed your health feed yourself and mm-hmm. your family in a healthy way it's than true. it is to buy Ugh. 
It's not good. I was lucky that I was raised in a home that my mother always made real food, and my I, parents always made real food. I as well. would. I used to wish that I could have, but it was like, are you kidding me? Oh, I had a babysitter once that had. It was just really freaking gross and horrible. I just always wanted to try them. Yeah, it, you're not. You weren't missing. I didn't anything. miss out. Anything. No, it was. I had it once as a child at a babysitter's house, and. Nasty. My mother still is a cooks that way, and as mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, she did win, win three blue ribbons at last year's oh. Portland Pie Off. Pie Off. And my mother is such a good baker and such a good cook that she doesn't even really use recipes for her pies and whatnot. She just throws them together. See, I don't make recipes when I cook, but when I bake, I yeah, have to have a recipe. It's like precise. Yeah. Let's ask my mother can do that. Because Morgan knows the date of the next Pie Off. It is August 16th, which August. is the same day as my brother's birthday and the day that Elvis died. Oh, Happy wow. birthday to Morgan's brother. Um, sorry, sorry about Elvis. your luck, Elvis. <laughs> sorry that, as my daughter said, you um, did a bunch of drugs and were unhealthy and didn't take care of yourself and died in the bathroom. Apparently the uh, <laughs> How does my daughter know that? King of Pop know. took that same tactic. Yeah. Um, I don't want to talk about him on my show. <laughs> yeah, that's sorry. not... Um, we have to wrap up. Someone say something nice. Uh, um, I don't think we got anything. <laughs> oh, look. It's David Tennant. No, stop. I think I think we should have Catherine try to say something nice. Okay. I um, think that this is the best tiki drink and the most amazing long pink straw mm. I have ever seen in my Yay. whole life. And I am so happy that I was invited to come here and have a drink out of this this tiki drink out of this Squid long pink the school bowl straw. in the long pink straw. She was the first guest to ever have a long straw on Strange of mm -hmm. Live. And I'm very excited about it, and I'm hoping that you'll allow me to take it home. Yes, you can take your straw. Oh, home. good. I didn't know if you wanted to wash it and reuse it for other guests. No, you later, can. No, later no, time. no. You okay. can take your straw home. No, That's we lovely. sterilize the. No, we can't. We, do so that. that would be my happy thought, and also that we have another month left of summer in Portland, and hopefully, and hopefully. it won't be like Wednesday, which was yes. 107, and today, which is very hot. Yes, it's very hot today. Yes. Even if you don't think it was, you're wrong. And I think that it would also be a nice thing to say that when um, the weather gets really hot and people get cranky, mm -hmm. that perhaps it would be a great thing, great energy to send into the universe if everyone could just really try hard to say something nice or do something <laughs> nice for someone. I agree. That's why I want to end this and, on it, nice and if note. you want to and not complain. And yeah. as my wife said um, on Wednesday, um, <laughs> we all we all we are, we are all hot. And we all know that. Mm -hmm. If it changes that you're not hot, then let us know. Very nice. But but if you do feel crank cranky because it's hot, call your congressman. Call your congressman. It's good time yes. call your to do that right that now. Hot. Right, because and it's global warming related. I would yes. just like to global say that climate change. That I like to call it. It yes, it was really hot on Wednesday and on Tuesday and on Monday. But did you see the sunsets that we were getting? Mm, they beautiful. were amazing. Absolutely beautiful. So there's that positive mark also. I would like to end on yet another positive note. I believe we're having Rick Trozzi on next week to celebrate the... Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Let's hope I'm right. Um, I believe we're this. having Rick Trozzi on the show next week to celebrate the second anniversary of his blog, The Silicon Florist. And I want everyone to remember to go and... Uh, Join the fan pages for the Roller Derby team yes. so that they can get their uh, Facebook special URLs. Mm -hmm. And don't forget about are, are the Roller there, Derby tweet up. Yes. The there will be on Facebook? the post. No, just the go post. up to Facebook. Jeez. Uh, on the post for the show, there will be links. Okay. And we're going to organize the tweet. And we're going to organize the mm -hmm. tweet up. Ooh, uh, Strange tweet up. Love Live will That'll be, be present and excited for the tweet up at the Roller Derby game. Mm -hmm. Bout. Bout. I'm sorry. See, Bout. I need to learn the terminology. This is very exciting. Do I have to wear something special? Um, do you have hot pants? Ooh. I'm, I wonder if my leather hot pants fit. We'll see. Is, if is I don't, I'll wear something wear? short. And if you want to be campy, then wear some hot pants and some fishnets and some spike heels and I something low nets. cut that shows your cleavage. You're, you're, I've got that, except for maybe what the hot guys pants. Wear? But I've got a short skirt that I can pull off in, in case I don't have the, the hot pants. The guy will also wear hot pants and fishnets. <laughs> Right. I think that would be hot. Yeah. That'd be great. But wait a minute. Are we going to the Rocky Horror Picture Show, or are we going to the Roller Derby? No, if Roller we were derby. going to the Rocky Horror Picture Show, I would be wearing a top hat and a little cute bow tie. Oh. 
Right. No, okay. uh, men can wear whatever they like. Ladies can wear whatever they like as well. I just, if you'd like to be campy. Yes, I like to be campy. It it's makes okay. Me, it makes me joyous. I like and um, I can probably arrange the tweet up to, um, for the, the those who are coming to the tweet up to meet the girls after. If the you bout. can, I think that would probably make people very happy. We can we can probably make that happen. Excellent. And then you'll have to have another tweet up so I can go. Yeah, and then we'll have another we'll have one. another tweet up. When in January, when the season opener, I think would be a great time to have a very large tweet up at the expo center. We could probably reserve like a whole section in the bleachers. So that's great. Let's work on this first August twenty second tweet up, and then we will work on one in January for the season opener. All right. With that, good night, Sounds everybody. Good. Thank you so much. Thank for you very much for having me. We're finally able to come on the show. I appreciate it, and I love my straw. Yay! All right. Good night, everybody. Be nice to each other, even though it's hot. Thank you.